When I grow up, I want to help my dad in the shop, the tattoo shop. I work at A-Town Tattoo. I've been tattooing since I was 13 years old. I mean, he's always been a great artist, you know, drawing, coloring, all that, since we were young. And um, very steady hand. So anyways, he uh, tattooed me when I was about 12 years old. I mean, I was still maybe junior high, elementary, I can't remember, but... Yeah, we used to get tattooed and my younger brother would stand in uh, the doorway and look out from our parents before they come home and we'd just shut the tattoo gun off before, you know, they would find out what was going on. It's my first tattoo when I was 13 years old. This one right here. C.L.D. Carl Lai De La Riva. That was with uh, my first machine when I was 13 years old, yes. He was tattooing at a young age to like survive and shit. I was probably like eight or nine when I noticed that he was like tattooing on people because I would remember some of his friends or some people that lived in the complex with us would be like, oh, hey, you know, like hitting him up for a tattoo, like right there. And I was like, the heck? And then he's like, oh, I just draw on people because I, I really didn't know what a tattoo was. So he's like, yeah, I just, I just draw on them. It was tough, man. I was I was a lot like the provider, you know. I was the the man of the house, you know. When my when my dad left, uh, so I had to really step up and take care of my younger brothers and sisters. He has so much emotion behind all the art, and it it comes from the depths of his family. His mom left him when he was younger, so you know he grew up in a rough neighborhood. Growing up, I never knew any of the, the stuff that went down with my mom. I knew a portion, I just knew that like, I found her her stuff a few times, like, because she wasn't being careful. But I never knew about it until I was older, until I was old enough to know about that kind of stuff, but um, I, know that, I know that they knew. I didn't want them to be corrupted, you know? I didn't want them to grow up in uh, the grime and all the shit that I was seeing and doing and and living and being about, you know? Um, so it, it was it was a big thing for me to push to to be provider, you know, or, or to be um, something to look up to because I felt like that's that's all I could uh, I could do. You know, he moved in with me, he lived with me most of the time. He saw my mom as uh, his mother because she was very loving. She was there for me, him, and my younger brother. Came to live with us and Parents thought it'd be a good idea, and uh, kind of backfired. It was just me, my brother, and him, just running around doing stupid stuff in the house. And parents kind of didn't know what to do. But uh, it was probably one of the best things, like for like living situation-wise. There's always people at the house, always joking around, laughing. 
Never like a, never boring, always something. So this is my station right here. This is some of my art. This is some of my, my uh, pinstriping right here that I do. I don't just tattoo, I do a lot of things of art. This is some of my pinstriping. This is some of my lettering right here. These are some of my portraits on charcoal. Oh, wow. Facts. And these are all freehand drawings. That's amazing, man. Here's a freehand eye of my wife. This is my wife's face drawn from a cell phone. How was, uh, how was people's first reaction when you told them, hey, this is what I'm going to do? Oh, they thought I was stupid. They thought I was a dumbass. They were like, what, are you gonna, what do you mean you're going to tattoo? You know, fucking, there's a lot of things you should do. You know, there's a lot of things you can do. You can get a real job, you know. Um, so that's one of the things I had heard from family members, friends, um, other mentors. Grab it for you. My name is Sudwape C. E. Liufau. I'm an artist and the owner of A Town Tattoo. Carl came in. Carl came in six years ago, uh, fresh out of his apprenticeship. First time I met Carl, he ended up uh, coming to be a tattoo artist over here at my brother's shop, which is A Town Tattoos. Um, and then coming from Lowrider, you know, I mean, it just he he was apprenticing under Jose. And, uh, you know, you just learned a lot, you know, being, being around, you know, really great artists. So, uh, you know, he came over, was looking for a job, and left over there. I, I called up Jose, talked to him, and, you know, he was, you know, obviously, as anybody would be, he was, you know, just, we, we never want anybody that we teach to go anywhere, but he was like, yeah, whatever. And we weren't really a competing kind of shop, I felt like, so, you know, it was cool. And I used to work for them, too, so. Seeing an amazing artist like Jose Lopez um, was, a, was a great start and a great influence on my career from the get-go, you know. So um, being over there and watching him tattoo when I was younger was a big influence. So he came on, and uh, he was a good artist, and uh, we had a little run for a little while, and then, uh, you know, he ended up leaving. He, uh, he just had that reckless mentality, like he just didn't care, you know, he just, he liked to party and get crazy and just threw caution in the wind. He felt like there was nothing that could stop him. His old uh, nickname, he probably, I don't know if he spoke on this at all, but um, was Rude Boy. That's how I met him. Rude Boy, if you ask me, I feel like Rude Boy was a cry for help. Rude Boy was a guy for help. That was a, that was a phase in his life. Um, you know, he went out and experienced the world, and and uh, I think that was one of the biggest blessings to be able to have him come back, and uh, you know, uh, be part of A Town Tattoo. So I, I mean, man, I've never seen this guy so uh, in tune with uh, everything that's going on and happy, and the smile on his face, and uh, you know, throughout the years. Uh, well, I mean, since I've probably been back here with, within the last year. Uh, that I've been able to kick it back with him again and um, it's been awesome to be able to you know watch and, and see how he's grown as a person as a man as a husband you know and a father and, and it's been great to see all these different things um, you know sprouting and blossoming out of this man it doesn't matter where you come from or what you know what you've done in the past like that's the reason why it's the past you know what I mean like you could be some drug addict doing illegal things and being wild and crazy but you know you can always change that and he's and he's the perfect example you know bang, gang banging out in the streets and being wild and tagging and you know doing all kinds of nonsense and to, to becoming this great artist that everyone wants to get tattooed by and hearing rumors or stories from other artists about him or other clientele all around the world that have been tattooed about him you know what i mean that's that's some that's some strong shit and i think i think that's good he's making a uh, his mark in the world, and that's his, always been his dream. Yeah, this is my grandma, my grandma Martha. Hi. She's like, she's been like my mom, you know, ever since my mom wasn't around. She's always been like a mom to me. I, ever, I always used to get in trouble because I would eat two dinners. I would come over here and I would eat dinner over here, and then I would run home and I would eat dinner at home. But because I always felt like I didn't want to disappoint, you know, like I wanted to 
to make them both happy that they made me good food, you know. So, but this is my grandma. And she's always been like a mom too. He's, he's my favorite <laughs> grandson. Let me tell you, he was the first, and I love him dearly. He's always been really good with us. He lived with us for a long time. Uh, ever since we were kids, he always liked to kept me sheltered. So that's pretty much how he is with his family, you know, his his two daughters and his wife, and he loves them very much, deeply, compassionately. And seeing how the way he used to be, I never knew that someone could love so much. You know, the way the way he loves his kids is is so pure. He does an outstanding job. He had his daughter before I did, and he showed me how to be a great father. I meant just by the way he holds his he hit hold his daughter in the beginning, to t feeding her, taking care of her, always being there when it comes to school homework. I mean everything. He's been a great father to you know to his daughter. Then his other daughter he has you know he's the same way. You know they're different moms, but. He still takes care of them, and I and I think that's awesome. You know, you could be all tatted up and look intimidating, or you know, to society he looks like a troublemaker. But in reality, he's probably the most outstanding father I've ever you know seen. We do a lot. We really like to be outdoors. Um, we have two daughters, and we love to go camping. Carl likes to fish a lot. Um, I don't like touching <laughs> the worms and the fish, but it's cool to watch him. Um, hiking. We just really like to be outside and enjoy nature. Uh, we have two daughters, a seven-year-old and a six-year-old. Their names are Lily and Kimora. They love my work. My kids are my <laughs> biggest fans. Um, if it wasn't for my kids, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything that I have today. They're the ones that drive me. They're the ones that feed me and fuel me and keep me going in this industry and, and keep me wanting to have something to leave behind for them. I love him a lot. He's really good at art. I like his tattoos and he he makes really cool machines. How long does it normally take to build a machine if you didn't have any breaks in between it and you had everything you needed? Shit, if I had everything I needed and everything worked out the way it was supposed to work out the first time, because half the time it doesn't want to work out as planned because they're handmade machines. Um, it's not factory built, it's not a machine pressed something, you know. Um, it's not a laser or die cut out. Um, it's all hand built, hand grinded, hand cut, hand welded. So all this takes a lot more time than what it would for a machine to just print it out. Um, so that being said, you know, things things going unplanned is a little more common than not, you know. So, um, but when things do go planned and things are, are lined up exactly the way I, I like them to be, um, they usually take between three to four hours, okay. solid, you know. So a lot of people, they think I'm just, oh, you just drill a fucking hole and you out it, you know. It's like, no, like that, that fucking drilling of a hole might take me like fucking 30 minutes an hour you know and i gotta sit here and do it it's not like i can walk away you know it's not like i can do some other shit or start another project while this is getting done you know so it's all tedious work you know it's just a matter of actually having the time and the patience to sit there and do it you know anybody can build a fucking machine you know but and a matter of building a good machine, a dependable machine, a, a machine that someone really understands the mechanics of and, and what went behind and into that machine, you know, this is it right here. It's just this time consumption. This is my grandfather right here, one. I love to make you. He's uh, the one that I use all the tools test. and everything in the back. <laughs> so all, all the welding and everything that I've, I've learned and done is because of him. Would you ever sell this to be massive produce? Would you ever sell it to a company? No, never. That's sick. Never. Um, and and not and and not to say that I wouldn't ever like work together with a bigger company or or work uh you know as like a you know maybe some type of a collaboration for a machine build one day you know for somebody who has bigger machining and you know bigger capabilities to do bigger opportunities you know with my machines but I wouldn't say no but I just would not. I would not liquidate my product to that point, you know, I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't, um, you know, diminish the value at that point, you know, like, I mean, shit, I don't even sell my machines for that much, you know, I mean, they're pretty fucking cheap, you know, I make them so that way anybody can afford them, you know, because I remember when I was growing up how much a fucking machine costed and what it actually took, you know, to get a machine and how much work it took to actually fucking save up for that fucking machine, so for me, I make them very fucking, very priceable, you know, very, very dependable, very strong, and uh, they're well built, you know, by an artist who, who knows what to do and, and how to use that machine themselves you know I feel like uh, if it's gonna work out or if it's meant to work out it will you know and if, if I think if I just make a good machine like as if I was making the machine for myself each time I build a machine why wouldn't somebody want it you know if I can make something with that if I can tattoo with that and and, and if anybody out there or if you've seen my work then you know the, the type of quality that I'm working with with my machines so, um, the quality is there to my brother you're a pain <laughs> and and I love you but you know I'll always be by your side no matter what as long as <laughs> you had you had sheltered me all my life now that I don't need to be sheltered anymore, I got you. I'm gonna take care of you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be a friend with this man. I hope I get to go on one of those journeys with him. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Peyote goes like uh, you know it's it's we eat it you know we drink it um, you can make a tea of it um, you know there's there's three forms that are taken during a ceremony you know um, and it's not really a, you don't really it's a warming experience you know like it's it's a it's a slow lift experience it's not um, you don't have a hard drop for anybody who's ever taken mushrooms you know or acid that's just it's very extreme you know um, I mean not to say that it's not good for you either they're all medicines in their own form and, and way and they all need to be respected in their own way you know they're they're only taken uh, when really needed you know but same thing with peyote you know it's a fucking medicine you know they're they call it a, a church you know because it has to be practiced as a church to be fucking legal you know but it's it's not it's, dude, this is ancient ways, you know, this is something that my ancestors have been doing for a long, long time, you know, they're going to continue doing it for a long, long time, and it's it's shown and, and proven itself to be, you know, a healing medicine, and shit, it's it's helped me, you know, through many times, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's it's mental healing, it's, it's, a, it's a personal healing, it's not like, you know, like, you're going to see somebody and be like, man, you look like you just got healed and shit. Like, no, it's like, it's for yourself. No one will even know, you know? You might have a glow after for like a week or two, though. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You can Definitely are glowing. Tell. You know, people are like, <laughs> you know, when people say you like, like, you, you look like you're glowing. Ceremony. Are you pregnant? It's like that kind of shit, you know? <laughs> like, you're like, man, you're glowing. What's wrong with you? You're so happy and you're so, everything's okay, you know, because everything's okay. Everything is okay, you know? And uh, you see those things and you realize those things through those ceremonies and it's a healing experience, you know? really last three days no it can last three days if you eat that shit for three days you know i mean shit if you eat enough of it i'm, I'm sure it might you know but <laughs> um i mean we're eating that shit all night long in a ceremony you know and it's it's uh it's drinking it's you know, through a mush you know and and you're fine you know like you're it's it grounds you it, it, you know your ego puts you in a place where you're like this you know where you're not right here you know everybody isn't right here like you're not looking at what the fuck is on the floor and, and really observing shit for what it is right here you know we're all everybody wants to think they're up here or a little higher than what they are it's like that one song everybody uh, <laughs> on instagram like they rich but they're not you know it's like guess nobody broke you know whatever the however the song goes but it's same shit you know like bro it, the peyote puts you on a level where you're at the you're at ground level. You know what I mean, we're sitting on the floor, on your knees. That shit hurts, you know. But and but it, uh, sitting there and doing that also shows us a form of respect and endurance, you know, for yourself. You know, you put yourself through that, and you sit there and you and you learn. You know, you realize, you teach yourself some shit sitting on your knees for overnight. You know, on the dirt, and then the medicine makes you sick. You know, it, it not not necessarily sick, but 
the sickness starts to come out of you. You know, and you start feeling a stomach ache and you start seeing some shit in the fire that, you know, it gets pretty, pretty deep. It's, they call it the smoking mirror. You know, and the smoking mirror will reveal self-truths. And then, uh, you know, sometimes the truth is not pretty. You know, sometimes your truth is not pretty. Sometimes, uh, you know, your self-realizations can, can make you sick to your stomach. So, so mentally upset that your stomach can turn. You know, and then you purge it out. And after you purge, it's called getting well. You know, and then that's how, the, that's how POD works. You get well from that. And then you start to realize, like, oh, my God, like... Dude, you're thinking of everything you're seeing everything in the fire and then once you purge it's like you let everything you just it's gone you can you freed yourself of that you know but you had to see it and, and realize it and 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 learn from it not just see it and ignore it you know you get well when you really realize it and and, and figure it out and you, you cleanse yourself you, you know? learn a lot from the other people that are in ceremony with you like you know some a lot of times those people yeah. are strangers and they're in there, you know, cleaning up your throw up. Um, you know, there's a fireman that's tending the fire the whole time and sweating and, you know, just doing that job for everybody there. And he's taking medicine the whole time mm -hmm. too. And he has to still do his job for everybody in that motherfucker. There could be 30 people in that TV. There's a, there's a doorman that's opening and closing the door for people, showing them, you know, there's rules in there, way, ways walk, that you have to walk. You have to walk clockwise in there, you know what I mean? You cannot be walking the opposite direction. There's, there is set standards that cannot be broken. I mean, whatever somebody throws at him, like it's insane how he just puts it down on the skin and just does exactly what he sees. I mean. The cool thing about it is that he actually will look at the skin and realize the, the limb wherever he's tattooing and actually see the tattoo before he actually puts it on. And I think that's that's something that he's really strong when it comes to strengths. He's really good at that. It's, it's pretty cool. nothing you've seen there's there's the black and gray that's just the start of it now that can range from anywhere with the black and gray but it's the photorealism that gets him I mean as of recently he's been doing a lot of freehand and he's he's tearing that up uh, he can do traditional his range is far if he really wants to but if you get a photo of someone that you really care about like this person meant the world to you and he sees that you're sincere and it's a photorealism that thing's done he's got that thing in the book that's gonna be the most beautiful tattoo you've ever seen uh, photorealism is what i take most of my pride in photorealism is, is what i want to be known for photorealism and portraits is what i strive to be the best at by my daughters one day because of you know the legacy that has lived on for me and my tattoos you know I, I, I want to be, I want to be the 
uh, on the, the cover of the Wheaties box of Tattoo. You know, I want, I want to be the best.